This is video number two in our series Topics in Quantum Mechanics. Uh, just a reminder that the playlist for this series, well, you can find the playlist at the uh, website at digital-university.org. Okay, in this video, we want to consider the matrix representation of an operator with respect to a certain basis or we should say with respect to a certain orthonormal basis. So let's say that we have an orthonormal basis set of vectors. We'll just designate them as u for right now. Then the definition to get an, a linear operator t in matrix form, that is this formula right here. And really the best way to understand the formula is just go ahead and use it an example. So suppose that for our orthonormal um, basis vectors that we had just two of them. Say u1 and u2. So if we go ahead and apply this formula, what we will have then is we can have the bra vector is u1 the operator t, and then the ket vector can also be u1. Or the bra vector can be u2. We have the linear operator t, and the ket vector is still u1. Or we can have it like this, where the bra vector is u1, we have the operator t, and then the ket vector is now u2. Or we could have it where the ket vector is u2. We have the operator, and then the ket, the bra vector is u2. We have the operator, and again, the ket vector is u2. So, what we end up with then is like this array of elements, a two by two array. Now, to understand this further, let's say that we have a linear operator T, and when it operates on the U1 basis vector, let's say it just multiplies that by two. And when it operates on the other basis vector, let's say what that produces is 3 times u1, and let's say we have minus i times u2. So here we have two basis vectors a linear operator t, and this is the effect that it has on the basis vectors. So what would be the matrix representation then of this linear operator? Well, we go back up to what we had here. Here we have for all vector u, <coughs> excuse me, for all vector u1, and now here we have operator t operating on u1, and that gives us 2 times u1. So we have this. Then beneath that we have bra vector u2. Try to keep it in better focus. And then we have, again, the linear operator t operating on u1, which gives us this. Then from here, we have bra vector u1. And now we have t operating on u2, which gives us this. So we have this kind of an expression. And finally, we have this, bra vector u2.
keep things in better focus. And then T operating on U2, which again gives this expression. So we have it like this. So, again, we have this 2 by 2 array of elements. And exactly what does this mean? Well, here we have the inner product of U1 with U1. That's going to be just 1, because these are orthonormal bases, times 2. So this comes out to be equal to 2. Now, directly beneath that, we have inner product of U2 with U1. That's 0, because these are orthonormal basis vectors. So beneath that is 0. Now here we have the inner product of u1 with u2. That's 0. And we have the inner product of u1 with itself. That's 1 times 3 is 3. And then from here we have the inner product of u2 with u1, that's 0. And the inner product of u2 with itself, that's 1, times negative i, is negative i. So this matrix, then, this matrix, then, is the representation of our operator t with respect to these two basis vectors u1 and u2. Now, notice here we have u1, u1. That gives us element here in our matrix. One, one. Let's just go back up to the top. This double subscript here, then, the first number gives us we're going to have an array of elements that's produced from this definition. This first number in the subscript designates the row, and this designates the column. So here, then, this 1, 1 is row 1, column 1. 2, 1 here, then, that's row number 2, column number 1. Then here we have 1, 2. That's this first row, second column. Then we had 2, 2. And that was this. Second row, second column. So really, in a nutshell, that's all involved. That's all that's involved in terms of expressing a linear operator as a matrix, again, with respect to a certain set of orthonormal basis vectors. Now what we want to do is switch gears and talk about multiplying matrices together. And the definition for that is here. Here we have two matrices T and X. Multiply them together to get a third matrix, A. And what this is saying is that a particular element in this array of numbers that we're going to be producing, here's the row designation, here's the column designation, and the way we get that is we consider Tij times Xjk summed over j. In this case, j just goes from 1 to 3. We'll see that in just a minute. What we want to point out at this stage of the game is that here, this is the row column. This designates the row. That designates the column. Here, j designates the row. k designates the column. So that the number of columns here and the t matrix has to be equal to the number of rows in the x matrix because we're summing over this j. So here's our t matrix. We have 1, 
two, three columns. Here's our X matrix. We have one, two, three rows. Now, let's go back to this. Exactly what does this mean? Well, we can have where I equals one, K equals one, I equals two, K can be one, I can equal one, K can equal two, I can equal two, K can equal two, and in each case, we're summing over J. So, let's go to here. We have I equals one, K equals one. So that means that if I equals one, for matrix T, we're in the first row. And if K equals one, then for matrix K, we're in the first column. Now it says sum over J. J can go one, two, three. So here, and that's a column for this, and that's a row for this. So here we're in the first row, J equals one, two, three. So we're going across the columns. Here we're in the first column, J goes one, two, three. First row, second row, third row. So what we're doing is we're going across and down, multiplying and adding as we go. So we have this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. Do those multiplications in addition, and that will give us entry 1, 1 in our new matrix. Now I can equal 2, K can equal 1. So now we're in the second row for this matrix. K equals 1, we're still in the first column for our X matrix. Sum over J. So now we're going across the different columns, down the different rows, multiply and add as we go along. So you have this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. That's entry 2, 1 in our new matrix. Now we have I equals 1, K equals 2. I equals 1, we're back in the first row of our T matrix. K equals 2, that's the second column though in the X matrix. Now sum over J. J goes 1, 2, 3. J here, the column, or the row, goes 1, 2, 3. So we go across and down multiplying and adding as we go along. So we have this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. Add and multiply, and that gives us entry 1, 2. Then finally we have I equals 2, K equals 2. So now we're in the second row here for the T matrix, and the second column for the X matrix. Sum over the J's. So we go across, and down, multiplying and adding. This times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, and that gives us our entry 2, 2 in our new matrix. So let's see if we can illustrate this with a specific example. Here's our definition. Here's our matrix T. Here's our matrix X. So we start with I equal 1, K equal 1. I equals 1, we're in the first row. K equals 1, we're in the first column. Sum over the J's. So we're going across and down, multiplying and add. So here we're going to have negative 2 times 3, that's negative 6 plus 2, that's negative 4, plus 3, that's negative 1. So here, our entry 1, 1 is negative 1. Now we have I equals 2, K equals 1. So we're in the second row of the T matrix. K equals 1, we're still in the first column of the X matrix. Sum over the J's. J is 1, 2, 3. J is 1, 2, 3. So we go 4 times 3 is 12. 
plus 2 is 14, plus 6 is 20. So our entry 2, 1 is 20. Now we have i equals 1, k equals 2. i equals 1, we're in the first row. k equals 2, we're in the second column. Here, sum over the j's. So we go across j1, j2, j3, j1, j2, j3. So we multiply. 2 times minus 2, that's plus 4. Plus 4, that's 8. Minus 9, this entry is negative 1. Then finally we have i equals 2, k equals 2. So now we're in the second row of our t matrix, second column of our x matrix, sum over the j's. So we go across and down. Here we have 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8, plus 4, that's negative 4, plus negative 18. This entry is minus 22. So this matrix here is minus 1, 20, minus 1, and negative 22. Entry 1, 1 is first row, first column, that's negative 1. Second row, first column, that's 20. First row, second column, first row, second column, that's negative 1. And second row, second column, second row, second column, that's minus 22. So that then is how we multiply matrices together using this definition. And again, notice that if you're going to multiply two matrices together, that the number of columns in the left matrix has to be equal to the number of rows in the right matrix. Also notice then that this matrix right here, this is a 2 by 3 matrix. This is a 3 by 2 matrix. When we multiply them together, we get a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, that's all we have for this video. Uh, come back, join us for the next video. Once again, we're going to discuss um, multiplication of operators slash matrices, and I'm going to do it from a different viewpoint. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue on with our discussions.